Yeah, I mean, it was so amazing that we got to kind of tackle that issue on a half-hour comedy show on a network. I mean, I think it's pretty awesome. It's really a testament to NBC um, letting us kind of tell that story, which is something that's obviously very, very prevalent in the country right now. Uh, it's something that's on everybody's minds and should be on everybody's minds. It was a tough one to shoot. When we read the, the script in the table read, America and I were in tears at the end, you know? Obviously, we've spent four years falling in love with all of the characters on the show, but especially Mateo. He's very beloved. And um, yeah, it was really tough. You know, and it's interesting because the scene where Dina's trying to help him through the store, I was performing with blank screens. I wasn't actually, you know, I mean, it was TV magic. Um, but it was such an emotional thing. I actually didn't find it difficult to not be having something to react to because the emotion of it and the idea of, of what's happening is just so heavy. Um, it was a it was a fun challenge. It was a fun acting challenge for sure. You know, I think it's interesting because obviously the show is a real kind of slice of life, middle America. We represent what America is. I mean, America is as diverse as what we see on the show. And I often say I feel like it would be disingenuous for us not to address some of the things that are happening in the country because we've established that this is a real store in the country that we all are currently living in at the exact same time. You know, there's not like a, a time jump. You know, we're not we're not dealing with Game of Thrones time here. Um, so I think it's been really cool to get to kind of find ways to address the things that are happening in the country right now, but doing it in a way that doesn't feel heavy handed or soapboxy or preachy and just kind of reminding everyone that it's like these characters that you watch every week that you love, they're living in the same world you are. And yeah, it would be weird if we didn't address the things that are going on that affect everybody. It's so hard to say anything. Um, the fans are very concerned about Mateo. I get messages every day that are just like, we just want him to be okay. Uh, you know, and it's it's tough to tease anything. Obviously, Nico Santos is still on the show, so we know that we will see him. Um, but what I can say is, is that we're going to pick up shortly after the last season ended, and we're obviously going to address this very large plot point. It will be fully addressed uh, in, in season five of the show. So don't worry, people. You'll see Mateo again. You'll see him again. I just can't tell you what happens. Listen, when I read this pilot script, I said this show's gonna get picked up, it's gonna run for at least seven seasons. So far, I've been correct. Um, it feels like a blink of an eye, you know? We've been doing this now. We were commenting last night on a, on a night shoot we were doing that it's amazing that we've been doing this for almost five years it feels like everybody is having children, you know, like before when we started, nobody had kids and now there's like an army of superstore children between the cast and the crew. Everybody's having babies, except me. I've got two very cute dogs. Um, but uh, it's an amazing thing. It's a cool thing to get to go to work on a show that you really genuinely love, that you really feel creatively fulfilled by with people that you genuinely like working with. It's a special one. I think that, you know, as actors, you do lots of different jobs over the course of a career. And this is gonna be the one that in the, in the winter of my life, I will look back and say, that was a special time. You know, the thing I love about playing Dina is it would be very easy to write her as a very two-dimensional kind of character, and I've always said that I just never want her to seem like a sociopath. Um, she has layers, she has dimensions, sure. I mean, is she a little bit kooky? Of course, uh, she's eccentric. Um, but it's really cool that, that, you know, the creators and the writers of this show have allowed me to explore different sides of her, to get to see her grow and get to see her have different emotions and feelings um, all through her, again, very specific eccentric lens. Um, but it's great. It's cool to get to see her. I, again, like I, I've said, you know, I don't know that season one Dina would have helped Mateo in that ice raid, you know? Like as she says in the, in the season finale of season four, she's like, well, he broke the rules. If you sneak into a movie, you're gonna get kicked out. But ultimately she's gone through so much. She's been through so much with these people. She has such a sense of, of um, protection over these people and feeling like she needs to be there for them um, that, that obviously it was very important to her to try and help him. And failing was also very difficult. I think the number one thing that fans contact me about on social media is, will the birds come back? 
did we really wait four seasons to meet the birds, meet the birds, and then lose the birds within 22 minutes? Um, I can't speak to that too greatly. What I can speak to is, is that even though Dina has got her revenge and really got, you know, just stuck it to Garrett in the way that she knew would affect him the most, I don't know that she's over it yet coming into season five. I think we're going to definitely see some residual uh, aftershocks of, Oh, the only things in the world that Dina really, truly loves, obviously all disappearing slash perishing. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of Dina Garrett stuff coming up in season five, early season five. And trust me, there it is not something that she is willing to let go of that simply.